Welcome to the ultimate guide to installing struts to any box. Today, what we're working with is the Vault uh, 730. And as far as materials go, what you'll need is a rivet gun. You don't have to have an electric one. I uh, decided to invest in this because I, I have plans for other projects that would require a lot more rivets. I figured that would be a nice time saver. Rivets, struts with the hardware, and I bought this all in a kit and a measuring tape as well as a marker and I, I like using either gold or silver it just makes it easier to see and then of course it picks it up better on the camera what you will also need is a power drill drill bits some silicone sealant possibly some tape definitely some paper towels and maybe a dremel now the reason why i'm saying maybe for some of these tools is because you guys might not necessarily need it depending on the box that you buy and the measurements that you end up with before we get started on how to install all this stuff, I will go through the online calculator that you can use, and I'll put the link below, where you can put in the measurements of the box that you have, as, as well as the weights, and it'll tell you exactly what length and gas weight you'll need for this project, and then also where exactly you should be installing it so that you're not you know, having it not closed properly or not open the way that you want it to. So before we do all that stuff, let's go to the calculator. So gasspringshop.com is the website I used to help me configure what strut I need and how I was gonna mount it. And we're gonna be bouncing back and forth between this website and the Pelican website. And I'll be pulling off my dimensions off of this little area right here. So what I ended up doing was using the interior dimensions uh, for all this stuff. And the reason for that is if you take a look at the box itself, the interior dimension is from here to here versus from here to here and the reason why that's important is because i'm not going to be able to mount anything on this weird 45 degree angle it has to be mounted on the very top of the lid right here where it's flat and also on the side of this thing where it's flat so that's why i ended up using the interior dimensions for this uh calculation from here it asks for your uh, the length of the lid and that's the distance between here to here and it's really cool that they have these diagrams that tell you exactly what they're asking for and that's 16 which I got off of the Pelican website close angle is going to be zero the weight is going to be seven for this one and this isn't accurate guys and I, I kind of just guesstimated because if you really wanted to be 100% truly accurate what you could do is just punch out all of these pins right here and then take the lid and then weigh it but nobody has time for that so uh, I just went down to the uh, specifications and used the weight of the empty. This part isn't going to be super important, but as long as you get kind of somewhere in the ballpark, I think you'll be fine. And I ended up using the, the empty weight for this, uh, and I just calculated it that, that the lid would be 7 pounds and the rest of it would be 10. It's probably closer to more like 5, 5.5, maybe 6. But I went with 7. Uh, you guys can figure that out on your own when you guys you know get whatever box you decide to buy. The width is going to be uh, 44 inches. Once again, that's from the specifications of the interior dimensions from the website. I use two gas springs. The temperature part, I kind of just left alone. This part right here is important. I'm gonna go ahead and punch in one and a half for now, because that's what the actual dimension of the lid is. And I'll show you why I ended up having to change that back to one um, once I calculate everything. The degree is pretty important because you need to determine how high you want the lid to open and then stop with that strut in place. Because if you have it too far over, then it might be a kind of a pain in the butt to reach up and grab and to close. So for my particular situation, this box is gonna be mounted on top of my truck and I'll be standing on the side of my truck rock sliders and then reaching up and grabbing the lid, pushing it up. And then when I'm done with it, I have to reach back up and grab it and then pull it back down. If this thing was 90 degrees, it would end up being all the way back here. And that might make it a little more, you know, of a inconvenience to reach all the way forward, grab the lid up top, and then slam it down. On top of that, these boxes aren't going to be super deep. You know, this is pretty, pretty shallow. So whatever object that you put in here isn't going to be taller than whatever depth this, this is and maybe an extra inch into the lid. So this doesn't need to be at 90 degree angle. Now if this box was being mounted somewhere else where it was you know below eye level then sure i could i could probably see that making more sense to have the lid at 90 degrees or maybe more if you wanted to but for me since it's going to be on top of my truck i decided that 65 degrees was going to be my jam so the pivot point is going to be at the bottom which is where that is right there 
And then for the cover material, I went with plastic. And most of you guys are going to end up probably going with the plastic box. And then once you hit calculate, this is pretty awesome. It'll give you the exact measurements of where you want to mount your hardware so that you can get optimum performance of your strut. If you take a close look right here where this hardware is on the lid, this is hardware that's designed to be mounted on the very side of the lid, not at the very top right here. And I'll tell you why that's a problem is going back to this, this lid right here is, where's the picture? This lid right here is at a 45, kind of at a 45 degree angle. So you can't really mount hardware to that. That's going to end up putting the, uh, the ball joint at kind of a really weird angle in the socket of the strut. And it's just not going to work that well. So I needed to change the numbers on that in order to get the hardware to mount on very, the very top of the lid and then the other one to be on the side. And so this one is fine. That part right there is not. So I'm going to go back here and just change that to one and i just kind of messed around with numbers until it gave me um, you know that hardware and it, it just helps me be a little more accurate in how i'm gonna uh, mount it but also give me a visual of what it's going to look like when i'm done with this thing looking at it right now i've got hardware that is actually designed to be mounted on the very top of the lid not on the side just like what this one is okay so going back to these numbers here, this is pretty cool. The uh, distance for A is, that's from the very back of the lid all the way up to where the, the uh, ball joint or where the center of that hardware is going to be is 9.4 inches. When I measured it, I just rounded it down to 1 point or 9.4. B, I kind of just ignored, uh, ignored because that's going to be determined by the hardware that you buy. So that's not something that we really determine ourselves. The uh, C distance is from the very back of the bottom of the box going forward. And then you stop that at 1.29 inches or when I measured it was 1.3 down from here. So this is where you want to make sure that the ball joint of whatever hardware it is that you mount will be. And this right here should give you the proper position of what your strut should look like. Now that you know where exactly you're supposed to mount everything, how do you determine how long the strut you need? Does that matter? And the answer is yes. So if you go to the shopping cart here, and it's kind of a pain in the butt, and this is part of their marketing, I, I guess. Um, they, they make you go to the this page and have everything added to your cart already. So I'm gonna delete all this stuff because this stuff doesn't really matter. Uh, I'm not buying it off of this website, but thank you very much, Gas Spring Shop, for providing a calculator. So I'm gonna click on the item itself and it'll tell me the length of the strut that I need. And what it says here is that what I need is 9.13 inches for my gas strut. If you really wanna buy it off this website, you can if you just want that much of a, I guess a custom setup for your boxes, but I don't wanna spend this amount of money because on top of that, you also have to buy all this hardware too, right? For the cost of 16 bucks, I was able to get two of these struts and the hardware that I needed. So that to me was just a better value. But you know, if you're super OCD and you wanna make it super perfect, you can order it off his website along with their recommended hardware if you like. When you go to Amazon, it's kind of difficult to find something that is exactly that length as well. And so you could, if you wanted to, try to look for something that's maybe nine inches, but for struts, I prefer to have the strut be just a touch longer than shorter. So you might find something that's nine inches. You wanna buy a, a nine inch strut, you can. I decided to round it up to go to 10 inches for that. So the other part that you need um, that's really crucial is how much force do you need? And it gives you a range between 10 Newtons and 200 Newtons, right? So if you click on this, they give you a drop down menu. You're like, shoot man, like, what do I need here? Is, is two pounds enough? You know, is 6.7 gonna be enough? It's, it's hard to determine how much weight you need, right? Uh, I ended up going to this other website and it, it's called uh, tunalift.com. I'll also include the links below for you to go to directly to this website. And this right here is gonna be the diagram that you're gonna base your length off of. So if you go down here and you follow the parameters and you plug in your numbers, it'll give you the news that you need. The weird thing is, is that it doesn't give you the pounds because it's still in, in metric. So I had to go back over to the other website to determine what my actual poundage is going to be. The numbers that I punched in, it gave me 37 newtons. So if I go back to this website here, click on a drop down menu, I have 30 and 40. And 37 is closer to 40, so I decided to go with 40 newtons or 9 pounds. Then once I started searching on Amazon, 
it was hard to find something that was going to be you know 10 inches and nine pounds so i ended up rounding that up as well so for this project what we're finally ending up with is a set of struts that are 10 inches long and 10 pounds of force so i hope that part made sense this is how you're able to use math in order to calculate what kind of strut you need and where to mount it and this is going to be awesome because you could literally buy any box and have full confidence that as long as you run these numbers you're going to be able to have the proper place to mount your stuff rather than you know looking at my video and maybe you decided that you're going to end up going with you know an 800 or a 700 or something shorter than that and then wondering if my measurements are going to work with your box On top of that even if you bought the exact same box Maybe you don't want your box to open at 65 degrees. Maybe you want it at 75. Maybe you want it even less. So this is why it's really important that you run the numbers yourself and then mount this stuff the right way. Now that we're done with all our numbers, make sure you write all this stuff down and then you're gonna take it to your box, start marking up your stuff, and then drill and install all of your hardware. So according to the calculator, what it tells me is that I need to mount this at about 9.4 inches from the bottom of here. As far as where exactly or how far in you wanna do this, that's gonna depend on you. I, I wanna try to stick this as close as possible to the edge, because the further you move this in, then the further the strut sticks out and you're sort of taking up space that other things can sit in, the further you are away from that. I'm gonna measure this and what you wanna do is, once you find out where that point needs to be, then that's where the center of that ball joint has to be right on top of. So if my, my mark is right there, then my ball joint needs to be aligned to that. Now, there is a, not necessarily an issue, but if I do have this mounted pretty close to this, if you look on the very back side of this lid, I'm gonna close this real quick. There's a kind of a lip that sticks up right here. And so if you put a rivet right on top of that, it kind of doesn't sit flush. So what I'm gonna have to do is take a Dremel and just sand down a little bit of that part. And all I'm doing is taking off a little bit of a thin layer so that the rivet can sit flat right on top of the plastic. But I'll show you that once we get to that point. Be here and 3.2 is about right there. So now I know, so there's where my intersection is right there. So that's where the center of this hardware needs to be for that. Right there, 1.3 down and okay. So I'm gonna take the hardware and center in the middle of where I marked it and then I'm just going to do, I'm going to do a little mark right there and then a mark right here. For this kit right here, I'm going to use 5 30 seconds drill bit. And then uh, I also have 5 30 seconds rivets that will be able to go all the way through the thickness of the plastic as well as the hardware itself. So earlier I mentioned that little step that's right there and how when you put the rivet through there, it doesn't sit flat because the lip is right there. And what we'll do to fix that is just use a Dremel and I'm just lightly taking off a little bit of plastic just right on the edge right there. And that's it. All I've done was just level out that little spot right there so that the rivet can sit nice and flat. Okay, so just to make my life a little easier, I'm going to take this piece here, center to where I want it to be, and then what I'll do is I will tape this thing down so that it doesn't shift on me. I'm going to take some of this uh, silicone sealant and do small little drop right in the middle of it and also just a little bit right along the edge you don't need to do a ton because all of this you're gonna put so much pressure from this rivet that it's all gonna get forced out so more doesn't necessarily mean that it's, it's gonna be better so i'm gonna take this press it into the hole that i've drilled same thing on this side i'm gonna open up the box and then take a look on the inside to make sure that it didn't pop that piece of uh, hardware out of place okay cool all right so everything's in place where it needs to be here goes nothing it's my first time using this battery operated a rivet snapping here and then i'm 
and wipe the excess uh, silicone off of it. But there it is. That thing is in there nice and tight. I mean, that's not gonna move anywhere. And uh, we'll go ahead and do this one and then these ones at the very bottom. And then one thing um, I'll do sometimes is I'll just drill one single hole and then rivet it. And then that'll help keep this whole thing in place and be a little more accurate. So for this side, when I was drilling in at the very bottom, uh, it ended up coming out right there. And obviously I'm not gonna be able to get a rivet in there. And then for this one, I'll just have to go with only the two rivets and that's it. So when you guys are doing this on this very same case, then just remember that you gotta keep track of where that third hole is. I was hoping that it would be just right above this somewhere, but I didn't realize it was gonna go down that deep. So not a big deal. I'll just silicone that to make sure I plug that up really nice. And then I'll put the rivet in that one. So as far as the installation goes, you want to make sure that the tube or the cylinder is going to be upright instead of upside down. I've seen people do that quite a bit. If you do some research on it, what it'll tell you is that if you have this upright, there's a lubricant in here that keeps the seal lubricated and not dry up and break down over time. And on top of that, it also helps lube the uh, rod and that gives you the best performance and then it allows your strut to last as long as possible. So if you look at the orientation, what I have is the outside of this thing snapped in this way, where sometimes people will also have it kind of reversed where it'll, you have the hole here facing inboard and then the, the hole on top facing outboard. Personally, I like to have it both facing the same way because it allows me to, if I need to take this thing off for whatever reason it is, I want to replace it or something like that. It makes it easier for me to get a screwdriver in here from top and bottom to pull the, uh, the retention, whatever this thing is, the retention piece to open up and then pop off of the ball joint. If I have it reversed the other way where it's installed, then it's just a bigger pain in the butt to try to get behind this thing. So here's the install, super easy. All I'm doing is grabbing onto this thing and then pressing it in. It'll snap into place and that's it. And you'll see here that there's a, a, a little bit of uh, play, right? Which is really nice because that way I don't necessarily have to have it, you know, 100% perfectly straight up and down, which is kind of cool. You know, you could have a little bit of an angle like that way or this way. So I'm gonna bring this thing down here and then snapped it into place. So that right there is the first strut. So that right there is the finished product. I've got my foam back inside of it. Um, here, if you really wanted to, you could probably cut out a little section to make it fit, but I'm fine with just squeezing that in there and having to stay in place. But uh, this is what it looks like. So let's check this thing out. It obviously closes down really well. I'm not gonna close all these, I don't need to. But here is what it looks like when you finally unlatch all of them and then let it open all the way up. Just like that, perfect. And then it closes down nice. And the cool thing about it is uh, there was another version of this that I did where I follow someone else's instructions. And I don't know if they used the formula or not. I'm assuming they didn't because it was mounted in a weird place. And what it did was it made the lid warp a little bit. And so when you close down on it, it would kind of like, I don't know, like hang up. And then you have to, you'd have to like finagle with it and then finally close it. Anyway, hope you guys uh, enjoyed that. And uh, let me know if you guys need any help with your project. But this right here is just one of the boxes that you guys can do. And you could literally take any box, any size, as long as you use the formula, that you'll be able to do this very same thing and then have your struts in the optimal position so that it could last long and give you better performance. So thanks for watching, guys. And if you guys enjoyed this video, please give me a thumbs up, subscribe, and comment below. Hopefully uh, this helped you guys out. And uh, shoot me over some links to your guys' videos if you end up doing the same thing. Thanks for watching.